What's up, what's up, y'all? How y'all doing today? New video. And this one's gonna be a fun one. Um, this one's pretty much everything I regret with my Supra. Things that I've done to it and things that I wish I could do over again. Wow, this thing got foggy. Guess it's hot under here. So I kind of wanted to go over everything because I've had a long, interesting story with the Supra. If you guys watch my Instagram post or watch my YouTube videos in the past, you guys have noticed I've had a really difficult time with this thing compared to like some other people. So I kind of wanted to go over things uh, that I've had difficulties with that I wish I could do over to help you guys to not make the same mistakes that I did. Um, some of them may seem stupid, um, but then some people might, you know, some people might like them. So the first one actually is a little odd. Um, most people probably won't care for it, but single tip, ex single exit exhaust. So my past tuner, and we'll get into him in a minute. Um, he's a whole nother story. My past tuner did a dyno video with a single exit versus a dual exit. And the single exit made significantly more power. Um, more power, more torque, and I believe it was even less boost. Something I wish I did was get the single exit from the start and not the AWE like I originally had um, back in the past because, I mean, this exhaust is sick. It's three and a half inch, full titanium. Yeah, it's sweet and it makes more power. The next thing that I kind of want to cover is everything I did with five performance. Uh, I know that sounds bad, and if you guys have anything to do with five performance, I'm sorry. Uh, but I'm kind of completely over everything about them, and even Sama, um, the tuner. So again, sorry if you guys have anything to do with them, but I'm just gonna kind of tell my story here. So I'm running their their uh, reflex kit. So I'll open it up here, you guys can kind of see it. Um, well, you can kind of see it, there's some of the wires. But I'm running their their reflex kit and I've really had nothing but problems with it. So to start off, actually I'll take that off. So to start off, some of these wires down here, they they weren't done correctly. So like, they, they have it set up super simple to where it's like, say there's a two prong here, two prong obviously right here. It's like orange and green. This side should be orange and green. Half of them were wrong. So I had to repin like two or three of these connectors and like I had major problems from that. Um, like when I when I got the port rail installed, like my, it wasn't reading multiple injectors. It wasn't reading my boost controller. Like I had some significant problems with this whole wire harness. Next, I wanna move on to their fuel system. So this, this was some of their fuel system. I paid $1,600 for it, and they said it's good for E85. Um, I know you guys can't see in there. I actually cut one open right here. Look at this, this is rubber line. This isn't a PTFE line. So like this is gonna deteriorate with E85. So I spent $1,600 on a fuel system that I'm not even using anymore because it's basically junk. Like I can't use this. So the only thing from that kit that I'm still using is the wire harness. Um, and then like a few other things. So, sorry, I'm using the wire harness. I'm not even using the fuel pump it came with. I'm using the boost pump pressure regulator, which is down here. And then I'm using, actually that's it the wire harness and the boost pump regulator. Everything else is replaced. So I literally could have pieced this together myself and even probably did the wiring myself and would have saved all that money or just bought the wiring harness from them and pieced together the rest. Cause I literally built my entire fuel system. Um, I actually, if you see, I don't have the stock fuel line anymore. This is a piece of it right here actually, because I rebuilt the stock fuel line. My entire fuel system is PTFE line. So next I wanna go over is tuning with SAMA and then five performance. So they're kind of like a team. Well, currently I'm on BM3. I don't know if you guys know this, I'm on BM3. And 
I'm running into an issue right now to where, if you guys don't know, BM3 and Reflex don't really communicate and they, they're not integrated, unlike um, whatever it's called, uh, MHD and EQTech. So my Reflex is up in here. I actually have it hidden, I have the wire down right there. But they, they don't communicate like H or MHD and EQTech. The way the fuel system works on the Super when you go Reflex is under light driving, the direct injection is the primary fuel source. As you increase boost, the port injection takes over and becomes the primary fuel source and the direct injection kind of dies off. So it's like, this is primary and then this goes primary. So they kind of like have this little line where when you start getting more boost, they kind of like swap positions. So the issue is, is when I, kind of going back to this fuel, that's why I brought this up now, is they need to be integrated because if my pump that I added back there fails, the car doesn't know that. So now I just lost a ton of fuel. Sama and Five Performance is like, oh yeah, use BM3. Well, BM3, even in custom ROM, isn't integrated with Reflex, unlike HM or MHD and EcoTech. So now I have to send out my ECU again to get MHD and get rid of BM3. So, you know, that sucks and I hate it. And something that's awesome is Racebox. As soon as I talk to them, you know, they did tell me that, that like you need to get off BM3 and go eight MHD or EcoTech. But I was like, you know, let's just see. Cause I just came from a tuner that's like, oh, BM3, BM3. Well now I got to get off BM3 um, and go to MHD plus whatever it's called. So that kind of brings me back to the fuel system here. The way that five performances fuel system was set up is it was two separate, two separate like fuel systems. So the low pressure fuel pump that you added had its own fuel line that came up, went through the fuel filter and then came up to the port rail and then came back down through the boost pump pressure regulator and then returned back to the tank. So that's an issue because it's not integrated with like it, the, with BM3 and reflex being separate, they don't talk to each other. There's, if, if something fails, there's no way the car can supplement for it. So what I had done is I completely scratched their entire fuel system. So now I have the low pressure fuel pump that I added and the factory fuel pump that I already had. They both come off and then they tee together like right here, go through the fuel filter and then they tee off right here. One goes to the flex fuel sensor to the high pressure boost pump and then the other one goes through the port rail, comes back down through the boost pump pressure regulator and then returns. So they come together at some point and for the longest time I had fuel issues because they were separate. Like for a whole month, we're like, why is this not working? And then I put them together and all of a sudden all my fuel issues are gone. So that comes further with um, Sama and he had told me to route my, boot, my max solenoid a certain way. The vacuum lines really didn't make sense to me, um, but at the same time, that's my tuner. So that's what I'm gonna do, because that's what he said. He's like in charge of the tuning the car. The way, hit, the way it was routed is it was like this one, I don't remember exactly. I think this one went to the compressor, and then this one was where the vent is, and it only went to the bottom of the wastegates. So I'm not gonna make any more boost over wastegate. So it didn't make sense. So when I went to uh, Racebox, so like, yo, you're not making anything over wastegate. Let me see your vacuum lines. So I showed them like, that's all wrong. Like you need to go with this setup so you can make over wastegate. So again, I don't know. I know Sam is out here like breaking records. I don't know if he's too busy, but I wish I didn't go with Sama and I wish I didn't go through five performance. All of my all I've not all of my problems I've had with this car came from those two, and the thing is, is like their customer service isn't that good anymore. Like before, Five Performance was really good with texting me back, um, and then it just kind of stopped. And then their electrical dude he left the company, and Sama he responds like once every three weeks. So I wish I never went through those. That was a big regret of mine. Um, if, if I had to do it over again, honestly, I probably would have just went with the Visconti fuel pump back in the back and called it a day with fuel for that. And then just did like their port injection kit. Um, 
Cause I mean, that would save me a ton of time and money. Cause like for this kit, that was 1600. And then I redid all the fuel system. All the fuel system that I did myself was probably $300. Um, and then I ran into the trouble with my fuel system where the, the factory fuel line kept popping off the top hat. If you guys haven't seen that video, I'll post that to one of these corners. That was a freaking nightmare. Um, so then I had to redo that. I had to buy a, I have a billet uh, top hat from Radium. So that's pretty cool. Um, so like literally my entire fuel system's aftermarket. What else was there? Yeah, so honestly guys, just go with the Visconti fuel pump. Go with Visconti's port injection kit. It obviously works. Just make it simple. And if you're going through tuning, um, I mean, that's up to you guys. Uh, I'm going through Racebox right now. Customer service is amazing. Like they, they literally respond within hours, get you a new tune within hours. And I mean, they, they're also out there with four and a half second, uh, 61 30 times. I mean, that's all, that's what we all want. So if I had to do it again, race box from the start, and I would just go with Visconti's products and I would get the PFS fuel line to uh, redo my factory fuel line because it's a, it's a bigger fuel line uh, than factory. Plus it's a different quick disconnect. It makes life so much easier. My next thing, I love the KLM turbo kit. Love it. I wouldn't change it. I would 100% do it again. However, I wish I would have just went with the 6870 off the start and not the 6466. Um, originally, I went with 6466 because someone on Instagram was like, I mean, 6466 is probably the best idea if you're stock block, stock trans, and you don't plan on upgrading anytime soon, um, just because the power band. Um, but now looking at it, I'm I'm in the process of trying to make power, and like I'm I'm I'm, I'm in the thought process of getting my trans built. And not right now, but it is going to be happening. Where I wish I just would have went with the 6870 to begin with, because now I'm going to have this turbo, which I'm obviously not going to get what I paid for it if I sell it. And I got to get a 6870, and then I'm going to have to get it all retuned. And it's going to be a mess. Like, it, it's going to cause a lot more work. I wish I just would have done it from the beginning. Plus, with the 6870 next gen, like, it literally spools. It makes the same power as this early on but then has the top end of the 6870. Like the new 6870 next gen is incredible. Like it's literally insane. Also, did you guys see this? I thought that was pretty cool that I did the other day. I got um, the IET sensor like in the inlet. So I get actual IET readings. Cause most of the time we just have it like dangling or over here or something. So it's, I'm getting real I IET numbers with that. So I thought that was cool. All right, what I wish I, what I, wish I did next was I regret buying the TEs. I love having the TEs. But honestly, I wish I just would have went with the drag pack from factory, or not from factory, from the start with like the bead locks and like just normal fronts with uh, the welds. It's because TE37s, I don't know if you guys know, but one wheel itself is a thousand dollars and then tires on top of it. So for my tire wheel combo for all the TEs, cause I mean, I got the fronts on and then the rears are right here with our, our NT555R2s. And then these are Michelin Pilot Sport 4S's. It was like six grand just for this wheel and tire combo. And I don't even run the rears because I can't keep traction with those. So it's like, if I just would have went with the welds all around from the beginning, which it looks dope because I would have matching wheels all around, like I would have saved significantly more money. My next thing, and I kind of covered it a little bit earlier, but getting the trans built. I haven't gotten the trans built and I'm getting tuned right now. Uh, so it's kind of like this weird thing where it's like, I can't go full power on the 6466 because my trans isn't built. So we got to like limit the torque. So a, a regret of mine is not getting the trans built before I started tuning. It's just such an expensive thing to do that I was like holding off on it, I guess to see what my potential would be with it right now. But as as I continuously go forward, I'm realizing like, I need to get that trans bill before I blow it. Cause then once I blow it, like that sucks. Cause then I gotta buy a new trans. Um, however, right now, um, pretty much what the process is, is and what's going on with me needing to send my ECU back out to Finland to get MHD. That takes about two weeks to do. So I think I'm actually gonna remove the trans at the same time 
and go send it off to ATS and have them build my trans while my ECU's out. So it's like a, a one and done thing. So everything's done at once and I don't have to like spread it out. So that's what I would do. That's, I mean, for you guys, get your trans built, get all your supporting mods done first before you really start pushing power in your trans is honestly probably one of the first things you need to do if you, if you plan on making more than full bolt on power. The next one is um, pretty much the carbon pieces I have. If I had to do it again, I would have went a little bit differently on this. So this is the rec speed front lift and I like it, but it is pretty low, but they do tell you that. They're like it's 73 millimeters lower than the front lip or something. But the fitment on it is just not good. Like this is installed, but like you can see, I don't know what that's from. Okay. But you can see like it's not sitting right. Like and it's it's installed how they told me to install it. But it's just the fitment's not good. And then the fenders. Good lord, the fenders. The fenders aren't rec speed. The fenders are actually like EBS fenders. But like, look at this gap. Like that's nuts. It's just not a good gap. And like down here, you can see like, that's where it's supposed to go. And then this side, this side's even wild too. Like it's, it's in there, but then way down here, it's that bad. Look at that. And down here, like that's not even sitting right. And these are these were the expensive ones. Like these were a thousand dollars, whereas like the rec speed ones are only like seven hundred. So if I had to do that again, um, I would have went with a different brand. So uh, spoiler, I actually have a carbon fiber hood coming from Car Carbonized, Car Carbonized or something. Um, yeah, it's the the neat one that's like the V. It's got like the open right here, and then the vents. And then it has the functional vent, like right here, where it's like the, um, like the super open one right here, but it's not the one that like scoops up. I'd, I'll, I'll have to post a picture. You guys will see it eventually. Um, but they also make the same design fender and they even promise like OEM fitment. So if this hood fits the way it's supposed to fit, I'm gonna get the fenders. But I wish I would've just got the fenders from the start because they have double-sided carbon fenders for $700. So I'm gonna pop the hood again because that's like the coolest part about the car while I talk about the ending here. Um, there's nothing done in the interior, by the way. I don't really care about that part. I thought about a new steering wheel, but nah, that's money. I could spend somewhere else. So when it comes down to it, that's pretty much my regrets with this build. If you guys have any questions about my build, please, please comment below or hit me up on Instagram. I'm very responsive to both and uh, I'm very out there with explaining stuff I've done or why I did it. If you guys got any questions, hit me up. I think it was kind of a long video, but whatever. See you guys in the next one. Bye.